Well, it is happening. There's no denying it, no getting around it, no changing it, no debating it, no arguing it. You just have to live with it. I'm going to have to live with it. You're going to have to live with it. The magic are taking. Yeah, that's 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 what's going on. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is March 29th, 2022. My name is Philip Ross and I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore ond. On today's episode of Locked on Magic, yes, the Orlando Magic are tanking. That's, that's the only way I can describe what's going on and what's happening. We'll explain what the Magic did on Monday against the Cleveland Cavaliers that just doesn't sit right. Um, what it means for the team and, and what tanking is and is not, at least by my definition of things and what I'm comfortable with. You might be comfortable with something else. Uh, I, I personally am not comfortable with what the Magic did on uh, Monday night. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, whether it's on your way home from work while you work out. Wherever you listen to us, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA, plus plenty of other sports to you. Just check it out wherever you download podcasts. Search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. Today's episode is brought to you by NBA Top Shot. NBA Top Shot is the future of being an NBA fan. Own officially licensed rare NFTs of the greatest moments from NBA history. Sign up today at LockedOn.NBATopShot. So look, um, I do not care if the Magic win or lose games. I have fully accepted, I fully expected this team to lose a lot of games. They're short on talent. We all know the lotteries out there. We all know this team needs desperately to get a top pick in the NBA draft and get a, a super talented player. No one is denying this. No one is hiding behind this. I love the approach the Magic have had all year. It's not about wins and losses. It's about development. It's about growth. It's about getting experience, seeing that experience, and learning from that experience. And that's what this developmental, the whole rebuild is supposed to be about. When you're at the development stage, it's about developing your guys, putting them in situations, putting them in uncomfortable situations, putting them back in those situations after they fail, uh, and letting them grow and develop that way. That's what this whole project is. That's what this team is. Is trying to build and trying to deliver. So, yes, they're playing a really good Cleveland Cavaliers team. Or maybe not really good, but they're playing a good Cleveland Cavaliers team that needs every single win to scratch and make their way into the playoffs. They are on the road, a tough environment. And yes, Cleveland's down a couple players. Jared Allen was out. Evan Mobley sprained his ankle. Um, Colin Sexton's been out forever, but I don't think he really affects too much. Ricky, I mean, they had Ricky Rio, but they traded him to Indiana. Um, this is a team that has a lot to play for. And, and it, it, if the Magic, the Magic aren't making the playoffs here, obviously. But this is their playoffs, to play these teams that are already playing at playoff intensity. This, this is the juiciest of growing opportunities, especially coming off of Saturday's loss, especially coming off Saturday's game, where they failed, where they were unable to finish a game that they should have won. They, they struggled down the stretch. They struggled in overtime. This was an opportunity to get direct learning growth. I, I love in the NBA, especially for young teams, when they have a failure one night and get put in the exact same position the next night, in the next game. Orlando was down by 20. And there's one thing we know and love about this team. They fight. They do not care about the score. They play to the final buzzer. They did that in this game. They did that. Uh, in the way that they played this game. They were down 20 in the second quarter. They gave up an 18-0 run. That second unit, uh, which it's, the Magic just don't have depth right now if they're not going to play Terrence Ross and Gary Harris. That second unit struggled to get to generate much offensively. Cleveland attacked them in transition. There were a lot of turnovers. Cleveland looked like they were going to run away with things. 
And then the Magic slowly clawed back in. They came back from a 20-point deficit, got it down to two before the end of the first half, ended up trailing by six, I believe, at halftime. They slowly clawed their way back into the game. They slowly got themselves back into the game. And then they took the lead. They didn't go away. They kept fighting. Yeah, Cleveland was without Evan Mobley, who sprained his ankle there in the second quarter. Um, but they had every opportunity to win the game. Their second unit responded well, too. That was the great part. This is all good things. The Magic's second unit responded really, really well, too. Um, the group of Ignaz Brzezakis, uh, Jeff Doughton, uh, Marco Fultz especially, but Jeff Doughton was in at the end of the game, um, Admiral Schofield, Chuma Okiki, and Mo Wagner. They did a lot of good things, but it was clear they were starting to run on fumes. And up to at 92-90, uh, with about five and a half minutes to go, Jamal Mosley called a timeout. It was the right time to call a timeout. It was the right time to kind of reset the team and the right time to reload with starters. That's what Cleveland was doing. Every Magic starter had a positive plus minus. Every Magic starter played really well. Wendell Carter was, was back and played really well. Franz Wagner was playing really well. The team was in a good flood. But instead of coming back with the team starters, he stuck with that group, a group that was clearly on its last legs, a group that wasn't producing much offensively, and a group that, sure, Jamal Mosley's rolled the dice and left a, a reserve group out there, but a group that did not have a lot of offensive force. And certainly I didn't feel like ha should have had a lot of confidence. And frankly, on top of all this, outside of Chuma Okiki, no one on that floor was important to this team's future. No one on this floor was important. Now, if it works, maybe we sing the praise and say it's a good move, you know, what, whatever it was. It didn't work. And unlike the game against New Orleans, it was clear it wasn't going to work. That game against New Orleans earlier earlier in March or a couple weeks ago, um, the Magic had a good thing going. They scored 27 points in that quarter. They were up by 14. They were in the lead, had a little bit of a cushion. They could afford to let things ride out and, and string that group along a little bit more. And we'll talk a little bit more about minute distributions here when I get – to what is and is not acceptable tanking to me. But um, but the uh, the Magic did not have that this game. This was not a time to stick with that bench unit. If the Magic were trying to win this game, Wendell Carter would have been on the floor. Cole Anthony would have been on the floor. Franz Wagner would have been on the floor. Maybe you leave Brasdakis out there because he was playing well. Maybe you leave Chima Akiki out there because he helped spread the floor a little bit better than Mo Bamba. But... The lineups the Magic played at the end of that game were not the lineups designed to win that game. And that's why it's so disappointing. Because coming out of that timeout, 5.30 to play, roughly 5.30 to play, the Magic went from up 2 to down 10. Cleveland went on a 12-0 run to close that game out, to put that game firmly and fully away, to end the chance of a Magic victory. You know, look... I'm not here to say that the Magic would have 100% won that game if they went back to their starters. That's that's I can't say that with certainty. Darius Garland played really well. The Cavs went out and won that game. Kevin Love was torching them. It, it would have been a good finish. At it, it would have been a better finish, in my opinion. I'm not here to say the Magic would have won the game. But the Magic all year have talked about putting guys in situations and giving them the opportunity to learn and grow. If it's a 10-point game, if it's... If it's the game is out of reach, whatever, who cares? That you're right. The rest of the guys, no reason to push them. But this team has got has been about development, has talked about development, has talked about these situations specifically, have talked about putting their players in these situations specifically. So why throw that away? Why are they not taking advantage of these opportunities? Why are they not? putting players back in these clutch situations? Why are they not learning the lessons or being given the opportunity to show they've learned the lessons from their previous failures? To me, there is no justification for this. Um, this was just pure and simple tanking. This was a team that cares more about grabbing ping pong balls than the development of their own players. Now, maybe this was a plan all along. Maybe this is something that Mosley cleared with the starters. They all said, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever you want, coach. Of course, they're going to say that. Uh, Wendell Carter essentially said that after the game that, you know, he trusts the coaching staff. And, and that trust is really good. That trust is really important. But to me, this is just completely wrong. It's distasteful to me. Um, it's 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 not what this game's about. At, at the end of the day, we've gone through a failed rebuild here in Orlando. 
under Rob Hennigan, we went through a failed rebuild. And a lot of it was because there was no direction. There was no focus. There, there, there wasn't a culture and an identity. And, you know, as much as Jeff Weltman kind of hates the idea of an organizational culture, uh, as much as it, it, it's it's obsequious and, and doesn't really have definition, I, I, I would say this. You've got to be about winning all the time. You got to be about doing the things that win you basketball games all the time. And to be not putting the starters back in here, not giving them the opportunity to learn and grow show t- is, 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 it may not be a direct message, but it is a subliminal message that winning is not important. You can make winning important and still lose. It's okay to lose games because you missed a shot. You learn from that. You get better from that. Um, you don't learn from watching guys that don't matter. I mean, Frank, no offense to those guys. Um, finish out a game. You don't learn by giving games away. In fact, that gets down to the players. The players begin to internalize that winning's not important here. We're just going to do our work. We're going to you know, do that, and then we're going to get out of here. I, I, maybe, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Maybe the organization isn't where I'm at with this team. I believe in this group. I believe in this team. I believe in what the Magic are building. I like what I've seen throughout the course of the year. And to me, you've got to be about that now. This is the most important point to be about winning. This is the most important part of the season or the most important part of this rebuild to establish what you're about. There's that old saying, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Dress for the job you want here, Magic. I'm not saying chase after wins wildly. I'll get to some of those points uh, later on in the show, but I'm not saying chase after wins wildly, but I've always believed that if you have an opportunity to win, you need to win the game. The expectation should be to win. You should feel the sting and disappointment of losses. Saturday sucked, and Saturday was unacceptable. But you learn and you grow from it. You, it happens once. You, it's happened twice this year. But it, it happens. You accept it. You internalize it. You maybe ha- feel a little anger about it. And you go out the next night and, and prove yourself. So what does it say that the Magic didn't give that group, didn't give those players the opportunity to prove themselves? What does it say that the Magic were put back in that close game situation and, and didn't even get the chance to make good on it? What does that say? It, it may not say a lot. It, it may be meaningless in the end. But uh, to me, that is that is a big thing. To me, that is a a bigger loss than just losing a game. Again, I get what's going on. I get that the lottery is important. The Magic put themselves in a real good spot to get one of the top players in this draft. It's not a runaway, you know, generational draft um, with as far as talent at the top, but the team needs talent most of all to take those next steps. I, I fully recognize and understand that. To me, the risk is not worth the reward. I've seen a team try to do this stuff at the end of the season. Maybe not even this blatantly, but I've seen the team try to do stuff like this at the end of the, at the end of the season. And A, the lottery, is, uh, the odds are the lottery will not work out for this team. And B, it doesn't work out for the players you have. And that's ultimately who the, this team should be responsible for. Not the players on their team today, not the player they may get down the line. We'll go through the box score, talk a little bit about what is and is not acceptable, in my mind at least, for the team at this point of the season, because I do acknowledge that there are bigger goals out there, and the team should be cognizant of those as well. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it is time to talk a little bit about NBA Top Shot. So this weekend, the NBA Top Shot, NBA Top Shot, if you don't know, is the officially licensed NFT. Uh, for the NBA. What you do is you create an account, you open packs of just like basketball cards. Um, you get these moments. They're, they're, sent, they're highlights of the games, uh, highlights of the games and highlights from your favorite players. I have, I've collected the entire Orlando Magic series too. So all of, or, all of last year's Orlando Magic team. Um, I've got every player that played on the team last year. Um, you, you create these collections, you uh, enjoy these moments and yeah, you can go buy and sell them on uh, online as well. And yeah, sometimes make a little bit of a profit. They have the new uh, set coming out on Thursday that includes Jalen Suggs' off the backboard 
uh, dunk against the Chicago Bulls. So we're really excited. I'm really excited to see that. I'm hoping that I rip that in my pack. Um, but NBA Top Shot is not just about collecting moments. It's not just about having a collection of moments that you like and enjoy. It's not just about buying and selling on the market. It's also the new way to play fantasy basketball. This over the weekend, uh, NBA Top Shot did a whole weekend challenge um, where you had to collect certain moments based on stats that were accumulated in the game. I believe the challenge this weekend was um, the, 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 top, the top nine players or something like that, uh, in our top, it was like the top five players in points, rebounds, and assists in an individual game, plus some special players from some special sets like their fresh set, thread set, which is usually the, the debut of a player in a new, in a new jersey, um, their game recognized game set, their rising star set. Shout out to my 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 newly my newly acquired Franz Wagner. There, it's a fantasy game as well. So not only are you collecting moments for your collection that you enjoy that you like. You're also potentially collecting to play in these challenges. It's a new way to play fantasy basketball. And your Top Shot account links with what's actually going on in the NBA. Uh, yesterday they had the wheel, which is a fun new fantasy concept where they spin the wheel and tell you what what player you need from each game. So for last night's Magic Cavs game, uh, you needed the first player to get seven rebounds. And that ended up being Wendell Carter. I have a Wendell Carter. I have a pretty good serial Wendell Carter. I bought a uh, serial number 434 Wendell Carter from last year, which I'm very, very pr proud of and happy. NBA Top Shot is the new way to interact with the NBA. Uh, if, you're, if you're still a little bit skeptical of the whole NFT um, idea, just think of it as basketball cards. That's, that, that, that's literally the best way to think of this um, if, it's a, if it just feels like such a foreign concept to you. Um, you're literally buying basketball cards. In fact, if you sign up for Top Shot today, the best way to start is to get yourself a starter pack. You can pull a moment of a superstar like LeBron or KD, or star rookies like Jalen Suggs or Franz Wagner for nine bucks. It just costs nine bucks. You'll get, I think, three or four moments in those packs. I've, I, 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 I've been collecting top shots here for a year, so I'm not eligible for the starter pack. Um, but you'll get three or four moments, and that'll kind of get you started and get you acquainted with what uh, NBA Top Shot is. And again, I, I offered this yesterday. If you have any questions about NBA Top Shot, send me a DM uh, at Philip R underscore OMD. I'm happy to answer questions that you might have. Um, take, take some of your heat for, for investing so much in top shot. Um, but I, we really have a great community. Shout out to my NBA top shot crew on Twitter. Uh, we talk top shot all the time for a special offer here. So head over to lockdown.nbatopshot.com to start building your collection today, um, to get started on NBA top shot. Again, that's lockdown.nbatopshot.com to start building your collection today. Today's podcast is also Brought to you by Truebill. Do you buy free trials renew without your consent? It's really a business scam out to get you. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions today. Truebill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 per year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Truebill has more than 2 million users and helps save them more than $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Um, go right now, Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands of dollars. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. The Orlando Magic again fall. I don't think I ever said the score. The, the Magic fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers 107 to 101. Um, again, the score was 92 90 with about five and a half minutes to play. The Magic were in the lead. They called a timeout. They opted to keep their bench players in, and the rest, as they say, is sort of history. Let's go through the final box where so I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, Magic led in scoring by Wendell Carter, 15 points, 7 for 14 shooting, 12 rebounds, 6 assists in 26-41. Um, again, no Magic player played more than 30 minutes. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in a bit. But um, Wendell played really, really well. No rust uh, after being out for two, for two games. He was really fantastic. Great ball movement. Um, again, this, this team is good when he plays. Like, again, I, I, that's that's – that's just the best way to put it. 
The team is good when he plays. He's a really good player. He's a winning player. He makes good plays. Um, it, it, there's, there is, you can't be upset with Wendell Carter. His, his, his development this season has been incredible. Franz Wagner, 10 points, four for eight shooting, three rebounds, six assists. I really liked how the Magic used Franz Wagner in this game. Um, they did a really good job keeping him on the ball, uh, make uh, having him uh, be a little bit more of a distributor and playmaker. He had some really nice assists in this game. He is starting to look for his own shot a little bit more. Uh, I know he only took, takes eight field goal attempts. Uh, again, plays 27 41, so didn't play a ton. Um, you know, not, not, you know, the guys that are taking 10 shots in this game, Wendell Carter took 14. Markel Fultz took 11. Chuma Okiki took 11. Ignaz Rosdakis took 10. So I'm not going to lose sleep over the shot distribution here. But I think Franz Wagner is starting to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball and starting to take more control. And again, that's that's something you want to foster. Again, I, I, I have to say this. Like, I would have loved to see Franz Wagner finish this game. I would have loved to see the Magic put the ball in Franz Wagner's hands and say, go win this game. That's an opportunity this team missed. That's a learning growth opportunity this team missed. And, and, and frankly... You can't miss those opportunities if you're a young team like Orlando. Mo Bamba, 11 points, four for six shooting, made three three pointers. Solid game for Mo. Um, it was able to hit his threes. That obviously makes him look a little bit better. Cole Anthony, 11 points, four for eight shooting, four assists in 24 minutes. I liked Cole's game too. Um, he had some turnovers early, but overall, he's been making much better decisions. The Magic have been playing him off the ball a little bit more lately. Um, that I thought he did a really, really good job kind of keeping the ball distributed and, and keeping the ball flowing and moving. Um, the starters were not the problem. Again, every starter for the Magic had a positive plus minus. Every reserve, except for Ignaz Prozdakis, had a negative plus minus, all of them greater than negative eight, all of them bigger than negative 10, except for Chuma Okiki um, at minus eight. Ignaz Prozdakis deserves a lot of credit in this game. 13 points, six for 10 shooting. I thought he played really well. He, uh, it, you know, if the Magic were going to keep one of those guys out there for the end of the game, it would have been Verstekis. I thought he played exceptionally well tonight or, or on on Monday night. Um, I thought he attacked the basket really well. Um, didn't didn't try to do too much. Was just really kind of in his bat in his bag. Was able to get some nice finishes around the basket. Um, Verstekis, I, I know he's been a punching bag for Matt for Magic fans for a while. Um, he played well. I, I, I got to give him credit where credit's due. Um, off the bench, Marco Fultz also played well. Eleven points, five for eleven shooting. For assists. He's definitely starting to look a little bit more for a shot. He's had some off, some weird shooting games um, that I really like the way that he's playing, obviously. And I think it's just right now, it's just he's just out there to play. He's not out there to to be a, a factor late in these games. So, uh, you know, I don't I don't think that minute restriction is coming off the rest of the year. He's eight, played 18 and a half minutes. Um, that's about his cap for the season. So I don't think he's coming off the minute restriction for the whole year. This is just about kind of dipping his toes in the water, which is perfectly fine. Um, Orlando does shoots 48.3%, just 10 of 37 from deep. Chumo Kiki was one for six from deep. Um, Orlando just 13 free throws. They were seven for 13 from the foul line. Again, that's the difference in the game right there was the free throws. Cleveland 20 for 23. So Orlando struggling a little bit with their fouling. Um, that's been a point of emphasis throughout the course of the season. They do turn the ball over 17 times. Whenever Cleveland built their lead, it was because the Magic were turning the ball over 17 turnovers for 22 Cleveland points. Orlando turns 15 Cleveland turnovers for 27 points. So it's not like the Cavs were playing that great. I have to say um, Cleveland, Cleveland was not particularly strong in this game. Um, you know, this was not their best effort. Um, this is not the same kind of juggernaut team that the Magic faced earlier in the year. And, and honestly, like I said, I, I don't know if the Magic would have won this game had they gone back to the starters, but they would have had a really good chance because Cleveland just is, it, Cleveland's just not quite there yet, but they could beat the G League team, obviously. Darius Garland had some big shots down the stretch. 25 points, 12 assists for him. He shot 7 for 17, 5 for 10. From deep, Laurie Markinen had 20. Kevin Love had 19 points off the bench, making four three-pointers. The Orlando Magic fall to the Cleveland Cavaliers 107 to 101. They'll be back in action Wednesday in Washington. The penultimate road game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Orlando will play... I'm trying to think who they play here. Um, Magic play... Toronto on Friday, New York on Sunday. Uh, then I think they go to Charlotte on Wednesday and then Miami the follow. No, they, they go, sorry. The, the, the rest of the magic schedule is here. It is um, it's Washington at Washington Wednesday, uh, home versus Toronto on Friday, home versus New York on Sunday, home versus Cleveland, I believe next Tuesday at Charlotte next next Wednesday or Thursday. I forget which day. And then they close the season out against Miami one week from Sunday. So we're coming up on the end here. And obviously um, the focus is turning toward other things. 
We'll talk about how the Magic will approach these final games, what I feel is acceptable and what I feel is okay for this team to do as they plan for the future and what really isn't. Um, things like Monday night probably are not good for me. Um, we'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to store, stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourself for more than 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every customer and they have everything you could need. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you again. That's locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. So, you know, look, I, I'm not blind to what's going on. I'm not blind to what's important for this team. Um, I am. I don't believe in tanking or, or, or this kind of design strategy to lose because I don't believe it works. I believe it causes more damage um, than the potential reward. And, and you know, I, I will admit I'm a risk averse person anyway. I'm not betting my franchise's future on a coin flip. And, and that's essentially what this is. If you finish with, the top odds with one of the three worst records in the league to win the lottery, you have a 52% chance, so a little bit better than a coin flip to let land in the top four. To me, that is not necessarily worth the price. To me, it is at the end of the day, you're going to need the players on this team or some of the players on this team to help you to, to, to build and develop. Um, and, and, and while you're in the season, your focus should be on them. It should be on what's best for them. What's going to help them develop. And, you know, still to me at the end of the day, chasing wins matters. Um, at the end of the day, nothing replaces the experience of winning like winning. You don't learn how to win unless you win, unless you go through that process. And so, again, it's it, it happens a lot in the NBA where you will have a big failure um, and then you'll be put right back in that same situation a few games down the road. There's so many games you're going to see similar situations. And to me, it is uh, irresp irresponsible and a failure on this team's part not to sorry about that um or orlando had a chance to put their players back in a winning situation, back in a winning position on Monday night after they gave away Saturday's game. They had a chance to be back in that spot. And they gave it away. They didn't take advantage of it. They didn't take advantage of that learning moment. Look, I'm not here to say that the Magic should be playing all their guys 45 minutes or 40 minutes. No, absolutely not. Don't do that. The future is more important. Jalen Suggs, he should be done for the year. Just announce it now. He's not coming back the rest of the year. There's no reason to hold that hope out. It's more important for Jalen Suggs to have a healthy summer than it is to play in these games. 100% agree with that. If the Magic don't want to play their players more than 30, 32 minutes, they want to ease off their minutes, they want to leave the bench groups in a little bit longer, absolutely do that. I am fine with that. It's okay to limit guys' minutes. It's okay to kind of ease off the throttle a little bit like that. I'm perfectly okay with that. That is acceptable to me. That is a long-term decision. But at the end of the day, if you're playing a player, if you're in the game, if you're in a rotation, if you're a coach in the game, you need to be coaching to win that game. You need to be doing everything you can to help put your guys in a winning position. That, that's a message you send to your players that, you know, again, it's a message that Mosley has been saying throughout the course of the year. No matter the time, no matter the score, we play hard. Well, no matter the record, no matter how many times left in the how many time is left in the season, you coach hard. You're coaching these guys to win. You're coaching them to improve. That's got to be what this team's about. This is not a one year rebuild. The Magic, you know, sure, the Magic have enough talent. The Magic are good enough. I think their coaching is good enough. 
that they could be a turnaround team next year. They get the right draft pick who clicks immediately. Jonathan Isaac comes back and is really good. Marco Fultz comes back and is really good. Franz Wagner takes a step up. Uh, Jalen Suggs takes a step up. Wendell Carter takes a step up. This team has talent. I was talking with a, a reporter for that covers the Rockets yet last night uh, during the Oklahoma City uh, Portland game, which you know that was a, that was a trip. But I was talking to him last night, and, he, and he, you know he he told me that um, you know I, I thought the Magic were going to get a couple more wins just because when their starters play, they actually look decent. I, I don't think the Magic are as far off as people think, and obviously it's going to take some time, but. Now's the time to lay that foundation. Now is the time to start laying those bricks. Now is not the time to say, well, you know, we got 15 minutes till we're off work. Let's just take it easy. No, this is the time to cement those messages. This is the time to really, really dig in and say, this is what's important. Now, again, I'm not here saying play Wendell Carter 45 minutes or 40 minutes to chase after wins. No. If the team is down 15, the team is down big in the fourth quarter, it's okay to ease off the throttle then. I am perfectly okay with that. I am perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with the team set, with the team limiting guys to 30 minutes at best. Uh, honestly, be upfront about that. Like, you know, say, hey, we want to get a look at different guys late in games. It, it's, it's, and I get the NBA kind of puts, digs its head in the sand, and the only way to get them to, to really pay attention and find teams is to overtly and outwardly say that all these things are happening or that all these things are um, uh, 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 to, to, to be upfront. And so the, the teams are put in these, these weird situations where they have to be a little duplicitous about this. It, it's, it's not tenable. This is not a good thing for the league. It's not a good thing for these teams, but the magic still have to make the most of this time. You know, again, Credit to Ignaz Prostakis, credit to Jeff Dalton, credit to Admiral Schofield. They play hard. They got down 10. They rallied back, cut the lead to four when it was too late. Um, the, the fight is there. The culture is there. The things that the team wants to build are all there. But it's not winning basketball. And, and at the end of the day, that's the goal. You know, I, I, I put that concept out there earlier. Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Dress for the job you want here, Magic. Do you want to be a team that ultimately wins games? Do you want to be a team that has players who have who are experienced in these tight situations, that have gone through these failures, that have learned their lessons, that have gotten better? The only way they're going to do that is to be in those situations. And again, it's not important today whether they win or lose those games. It's important that they experience them. It's important that they get back into the they get back into the fire. They go back into the pit when they fail and they try again and they get that opportunity to try again. And to me, that was robbed of them Monday night. To me, that was that was taken away from them. A real growth opportunity, a real chance to get better was just let go and given away. And, and that cannot be what this team is about right now. Look, the Magic are going to do what they're going to do, uh, whether it's Jamal Mosley legitimately wanting to see what that group looks like in late-game situations, whether it's management saying, hey, this is our. This is what we're going. Can you do? Can you do this? Can you do things this way? Can you limit these guys' minutes in some way? It. I'm not here to say that the Magic are going to do what they're going to do. The lottery is going to end up the way the lottery is going to end up. It's not something you can control. And and to me, that's the part that's frustrating the most is, uh, you got to control what you can control. And right now, that's the team you have. You can't be banking or betting on something you don't have. You got to control the team you have. And again, it's okay to do some things. I, I don't care if Jalen Suggs plays the rest of the year. I don't honestly, I don't think he should play the rest of the year. I think they should shut him down and, and prep him for his offseason. That's far more important. I'm perfectly fine with limiting guys' minutes and keeping starters down to 30, 31 minutes. I'm perfectly fine with that, if not less. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with leaving the bench group in a little bit longer in the second quarter before going back to the starters. And if that costs you a game, that costs you a game. But when the game is on the line, when there's a clear opportunity to win, the Magic should be doing everything they can to win that game. Because to me, that experience of winning and closing out a game, closing out a game is far more valuable than anything else this team can do right now. And there may not be very many opportunities to do it with the way this team is playing.
That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find us on Twitter at Locked on Magic. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Set your tune in to him like Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places in the more podcasts to your podcast enable listening device. You can find me on Twitter at R underscore MD. And, of course, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, make your second listen Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Ross and Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.